name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to do a video about um, valve uh, clearances, or if you're American you'd call it valve wash, stuff like that. So, if I can find my squirty bottle of squirty, um, people, you know, when we did video, when I did the videos back in the day about the Desmos, uh, just the basic design and stuff like that, and features of different Ducati heads, the twin valve hemi of a monster and the sexy four valve of every other weapon that a cat you've made recently um the direct overhead cams instead of the single overhead cam um people will always say oh god there must be wankers and stuff to do the uh, valve clearances for and i thought we'd do a video about that exact thing about the valve clearances so the valve clearances on these things really aren't that difficult to do. Um, well, it's a bit fiddly. So if you're looking for a video of how to do it, uh, I don't have an engine. I could do a video. Yes, I could actually. Well, we'll keep that one in mind. We'll see what people say. Um, but you have the valve sat here and then you have this um, follower underneath so it's basically just like a rock around it's a rock around underneath that lifts the valve closed like so and then you have the top finger follower with the cam that pushes the valve down and open just like you would have any normal and i say normal um some normal overhead cam valve arrangements but we're not normal it's the ones that are common today is the finger followers we'll do an entire i'll do an entire video about finger followers and why and stuff like that so basically it's a system where this pushes down and this pulls up. The way that that is accomplished is with basically a set of keepers, as the Americans say, or collets, which are these little bloody things. that are a couple of different types from Ducati, but we'll just ignore that for the time being. What basically happens is, is that this, with the said collets, let's see if I can fucking do this. Should be a bit of grease in there to help you grab them. Um, stuff like that, but you, you can get what I'm doing here. Like so, and it's exactly the same procedure as in they get encapsulated and stuck in there. It's not a taper, it's just the constant force of this follower here pushing against it. So it's constantly lifting the valve uh, up and that constant force is applied by said spring. So there's the other one. This said spring here sits. I should just, oh, let me just swap them over so I don't mix all the parts actually. Um, so this said spring sits in here like so. It's the wrong bloody way. Just put it on like that. The spring goes, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm fucking this up royally. There we go. The spring goes in like that. And then it sits against a, uh, a bar in the casting. And then obviously as you try, it's a torsional spring. As you try and twist this, it applies a force. So as you can see, this is coming off. They actually get stuck because they get basically really forced on there over time being hit backwards and forwards. So this thing is constantly applying a preload from this spring up against here. So these are not springless systems. It's just when you assemble this thing, it's a lot easier to turn up to move these rockers than it is the springs. It's not as there isn't as much force because the times uh, the valves are timed correctly. What happens is, is the the force of the outer cam, so this cam here pressing against here, will let off just before the actuation of the finger follower. Hopefully, the finger follower is in motion to basically make up that clearance and then as that lets the pressure off this then pushes it down and opens the valve so this is riding against the valve tip just like in any normal valve application and this is constantly applying some kind of preload so when this cam actuates this finger follow with the cam actuates it's actually fighting not only the inertia of the valve but also the tension in this spring so there is a slight loss there but then People are going to start going about return losses through springs. We'll get to that. I need to do a setup for that because, yeah, that's a bit technical, is that one? But you can basically see how this works. So the clearances 
that are involved here, there's one thing I have missed out, the clearances in this system are a tap hit that goes on top of the valve like so, there is clearance, a recess inside this uh, collet carrier, or the, yeah, we'll just call it that, that sits in there. So basically this is now, if I tap on there, it is literally directly in contact with the valve and there's clearance below it. I'll do a cross section or something. So that pushes against there. So the valve clearance is with this uh, shim that sits on top of here. And the valve clearance for this bottom actuation arm is actually the collet retaining collar here. So that is how um, the clearances are done. Basically, at a cold temperature, you set the cams into their, you know, into their locations like you would normally. What's top dead center? What's not? So on and so forth. And then you will see there's a clearance. You know, there's a clearance in there. Now this is easy because it's just free floating. You, know, you can get a feeler gauge in there. With the bottom one, you're fighting against the spring a bit, but you can still see what you can fit in there for the bottom one for the followers. So it's what can you fit into that contact there, right in there where my thumb is. I'm not really doing a good job of pointing it out, am I? Right in there. Yeah? So, the way to think about this system is to kind of just think about, it's like a cam on top and a cam on bottom. So you treat them as two separate systems. So there's, in a sense, you're thinking clearance here, and there's a clearance there as if the whole thing was upside down. You know what I mean? If you actually look, and because the, the cat here wankers, right? <laughs> If you actually look, I'll take some pictures and stuff. But if you actually look on here, this says 290. It says 290. And you can't see anything when I write that down. There we go. It says 290 on the side of here. And if you measure this thing, you'll go, well, hang about, that says 451. If you can see that, 451. That's not 290. That's because the sneaky bastards aren't measuring that. What they're measuring is this. So there, this is a cross section of this shim. It is this measurement here that is 290, not the outside, which is two, uh, 451 or 450, you know what I mean? That's what we're measuring on the outside, but that's not what that is. Same for these little buggers, um, for these collet carriers here. On the side of this, this says, 3.35 again if you measure the whole thing it's well it's 7 7 4 7 50 7 4 5 basically 7 4 5 is what we're getting there again it's the depth from this surface to the collet ring it's just yeah it doesn't matter what it what you do is is that you look at your original one if your clearance is too big by just say 200 microns, then you get the shim that is, you add 200 microns onto that dimension there if you are wide, you know what I mean? And you subtract or add whichever way you want, you need to go, you're required to go. I'll put this head back together and I'll show you another video on, because measuring's a twat, <laughs> but you know, stuff like that. But basically what they've done is they've just turned this, which, which ones are the datum surfaces? So, you know, this is the actual bearing surface and the top of the shim of the valve is the bearing surface. You know, as these things slowly wear, you know, who has a Ducati that long? Usually they explode well before that. But <laughs> And someone might say, no, they don't, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I seem to have an awful lot of blown up Ducati engines. Um, but yeah, there's a reason for that. Let's not uh, anger the cat too much, otherwise they'll send the heavies in and probably all go the same way as MCN, but who cares. Any road, little dig there, and um, yeah. Hope that, <laughs> hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.